which is just at divvybikes.com right there, um, where anyone can make suggestions uh, for a station. You can also support, make comments on um, any of the station locations and ideas. And we, so we actually are using all that information to uh, find, to figure out what the best station locations are. We're going to be expanding in all directions this year. Uh, we're going to be adding 175 stations, as Elliot mentioned. Uh, about 25% of those are infill. So we've actually zoomed back in. You can actually see, like, in down, some of the downtown, you can actually see right here. There's a gap right there. That's King's Landing. I don't know. Um, but there's some gaps that we need to fill. So we're going to be filling about 25% of the stations will be in those gaps. And then we're going to be expanding down to about 79th on the south, probably get to about 2 year Howard on the north, and then west to, we're actually west to Kedzie, but actually filling in more to Kedzie, except it kind of hugs in a little bit closer along the shore. We're using all that data that we collect from this website, plus in-person data uh, for both Altman and also uh, in, in the communities, to really put that together, come up with an idea of where stations should go. And then we actually sit in a room and we actually use Street View. Do our first analysis. We actually look at dots on it. We put dots on a map and use Street View to, to then investigate where it makes sense. And then we actually go out in the field and visit those and figure out the final locations. Real quick. Yeah. Um, this software it's being used is something called Sharebots, which is made by an awesome uh, the government uh, software development shop in Europe. Open plans. plans. And they worked with CDOT to come up with this basically uh, way of, of crowd, sort, crowd planning the system in a way. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested in Sharebots for any number of other applications, it's open source, you can use it for free, you can stand it up if you have a programmer, and I think they're making it so you can kind of create your own value for it. So Sharebots for anyone who's interested in this kind of crowd planning stuff. Someone suggested a station in the middle of Lake Michigan. Yes, we had a couple. And, it, and you'll also see if you look at the map, there are stations in Naperville, there's stations in Oak Lawn, uh, Westmont, or North Lake, O'Hare Airport. We will, despite it being in Chicago now, despite, despite the fact that it's in the city of Chicago, technically, there will never be any stations in Just. <laughs> you can see, you can put them wherever you want. We reserve the right to stop at the city border in this particular case. Although, actually, we put in a grant application with Oak Park and Evanston a couple months ago. Um, we should here, actually, in the next month or so to actually expand into those suburbs. We're being strategic, though. As you can see, we've started we started here in the center. We're growing outwards. We're going to continue to do that. We can't hop out to Naperville out here um, because just the, to serve that doesn't make sense at this point. So we're trying to grow up from the center. We're willing to work with suburbs. We're willing to actually go out into those communities. We don't know exactly what the revenue sharing model would be or how that would work, but we're still figuring out and, and interested. But the less dense your, your urban area, the harder it is to be bike share. Right. Because for it to be useful, it needs to be close to stuff. And if everything's really spread out, that means you have to have 10 times as many stations, which breaks the thing. And then and on that point, in downtown, we're probably Stations are one to two blocks apart at the most. In general, um, there's some there are gaps, like I mentioned. But then as you get out, out in the neighborhoods, it's, they're usually about three to four blocks apart. But um, that's kind of the standard that we're working. On. One of the cool things about bike share is that the stations are modular, <coughs> which you may have noticed. So we've actually, you know, we started with these stations, but sometimes we'll notice, especially downtown during rush hour, stations get full really quickly in the morning, get empty out really quickly at night, and so. Instead of adding a whole new station, sometimes all we need to do is just add more plates to it, those you know, four docks at a time, which we've done uh, on Daily Center Plaza. Daily Center Plaza is now 425. Is now 45 docks. Yes. Yeah. So that's cool, and that's how we use the data too in real time to see what gets full and what gets empty. Because again, the way that bike share works is you, know, you want to you always want to make sure a bike's available to take, and you also want to make sure a dock's available to return your bike sort of basic thing. So we're always looking at full stations and empty stations and how often that happens. So you can sort of adjust and fly. And we have that actually, the full and empty is one of the standards. So we have, we have a great working relationship, but we also have performance standards that maybe the Alta team actually need to meet. And so that's one of the things we use for judging. And they actually, if they do better, we, as we make profit, they actually make they actually get more of the profit. We Right now, the city's taking more risks, so we get more of the profit. But then as we advance in the years in the contract, 
they actually get more of a profit based on their performance and meeting meeting or exceeding the standards that were set. Yeah. Can you talk about the 